Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Ansell, Chairman of the Department of Medicine at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City and Professor of Medicine at New York University School of Medicine. I'm also Chair of the Medical and Scientific Advisory Board for the National Blood Clot Alliance. The National Blood Clot Alliance is a patient-led advocacy organization dedicated to promoting awareness about deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, and clotting disorders among both patients and the public. We created this DVD to share important information from a new nationwide survey that we recently conducted. DVT and PE impose a major public health burden in the United States. The Surgeon General's call to action to prevent deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism estimates that each year up to 600,000 individuals are affected by DVT or PE, and that at least 100,000 deaths are due to these diseases. This call to action also points to several patient groups who are at increased risk for DVT PE, including hospitalized patients, patients with active cancer, and patients who undergo hip and knee replacements. In response to the Surgeon General's call to action, the National Blood Clot Alliance conducted a nationwide survey about DVT PE among the public and among these at risk patient groups. Specifically, this DVD will provide you with an overview of our key survey findings about DVT, PE awareness among the general public. It also will provide you with information about DVT, PE awareness and DVT, PE prophylaxis experiences among patients on active cancer treatment or with cancer diagnosis or recurrence within six months of our sampling. The results of this survey are being presented or shared at several important meetings, including among others, the Society of Hospital Medicine, the National Association of Orthopedic Nurses, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, the American Academy of Family Physicians, and the American Public Health Association. More information about our survey findings, as well as additional educational tools for healthcare professionals and patients, can be found at our organization's website. We trust you will find this survey information helpful and that it will enable you to join in the efforts of the National Blood Clot Alliance to optimize the awareness and prevention of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, and most importantly, to support our efforts to stop the clot. Thank you. The National Blood Clot Alliance, or NBCA, is a volunteer-based, patient-led advocacy organization dedicated to the prevention and quality treatment of blood clots and clotting disorders. The organization's volunteer governing board consists of individuals directly affected by clotting disorders or blood clots. While the organization is volunteer-based, it remains science-driven. NBCA's Medical and Scientific Advisory Board is made up of physicians, researchers, and other healthcare professionals affiliated with prestigious universities, hospitals, and medical facilities nationwide. NBCA's awareness and advocacy efforts are focused on one singular imperative, to stop the clot. In 2008, the U.S. Surgeon General issued a call to action directly tied to NBCA's mission. This call to action to prevent deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism spotlights the public health impact and urgency associated with DVT and PE, sets forth recommendations for optimal diagnosis, prevention, and treatment, and suggests criteria for research, education, and important policy initiatives in this field. According to the Surgeon General's call to action, up to 600,000 people are affected by blood clots each year, and about 100,000 people in the U.S. die each year as a result. Other data, such as that from the Mayo Clinic, actually show the impact to be greater, with an estimated 900,000 Americans affected and 300,000 annual deaths. All patients with active cancer are at increased risk for DVT-PE, but the risk is greater for cancer patients who are hospitalized, have surgery, or undergo certain types of cancer treatment, such as chemotherapy and radiation. Without prophylaxis, 40 to 80 percent of surgical oncology patients will develop DVT in the cath vein, and between 4 and 10 percent of cancer patients will develop PE. 1 to 5 percent of these PEs are fatal. Mortality is greater among cancer patients with DVT PE than among those with cancer alone. NBCA's DVT PE Awareness Survey responds to the Surgeon General's call to action benchmarks patient awareness and patient reported experiences with prophylaxis, and it is a comprehensive study, one of the largest of its kind. 
Survey questions were developed by NBCA's Survey Steering Committee. This steering committee consisted of several members of NBCA's Medical and Scientific Board and also several physicians in the fields of oncology and hospital medicine. The National Blood Clot Alliance worked with a national survey firm to conduct the survey via online or internet research panels very late in 2009 and conducted extensive evaluations of all survey findings in 2010. The survey was designed to measure awareness among the general public. Respondents in the national sample included 500 adults in the U.S., 20 years of age or older, 51% female. The exact same awareness survey was conducted among 500 U.S. patients with a diagnosis of cancer within 12 months of sampling. 67% of these patients were diagnosed, had a cancer reoccurrence, or were on active cancer treatment within six months of sampling. Responses from patients who required a hospital stay for treatment, 206 of the total 500 cancer patient respondents were compared to responses of patients who were exclusively treated as outpatients, 294 of the total 500 cancer patients. These oncology patients also were surveyed about information provided to them about DVTPE, their experiences with prophylaxis, issues involving adherence, key findings from the survey data relative to these cancer patients and select awareness data from the general public survey are being presented here. Looking more closely at the cancer patients involved in this survey, diagnoses included breast cancer 34%, prostate 10%, lung 9%, skin 8%, colon 6%. All other cancer diagnoses were reported at less than 6% in each case. Awareness of DVT and PE is low among all oncology patients surveyed. Just 24% recognize the term DVT, and just 15% recognize the term PE. Compared to inpatient responses, however, we do see that significantly more inpatient survey respondents are aware of both DVT and PE. Just 15% of oncology outpatients were aware of the term DVT, compared to 36% of the inpatient group. Just 9% of outpatients were aware of the term PE, compared to 24% of the inpatients. When looking at awareness of DVT and PE among the larger oncology groups surveyed and compared to the general public, the survey shows that DVT-PE awareness is no greater among at-risk oncology patients than it is among the general public. At-risk oncology patients have similar awareness levels of both DVT and PE when compared to awareness data seen among the general public sample. Another important finding was connected to health literacy. While patients do have very low awareness of DVT and PE, respondents in both the oncology group and national sample do know what a blood clot is, and virtually all respondents recognize that blood clots can be life-threatening. Turning to awareness of DVT risk factors among the cancer patient respondents, just 155 of the 500 oncology patients say they can name DVT risk factors, and just 8% cite surgery, and just 4% cite chemo, radiation, or some type of cancer treatment. Just 97 of the total 500 oncology patients surveyed said they can name DVT signs or symptoms, with about one in three most frequently saying leg pain, leg swelling, and unspecified pain. 86 total respondents say they can name PE signs or symptoms, and 69% of this group cite breathing difficulty most frequently. Looking at the provision of information by doctors and other healthcare providers, compared to the oncology inpatients surveyed, significantly fewer outpatients say that their doctor or other healthcare professional discussed blood clot risks due to cancer. Patient reported experiences with venous thromboembolism, or VTE prophylaxis, vary. And, when compared to inpatient respondents, outpatients report significantly lower utilization of VTE prophylaxis, this difference is consistent with the published recommendations of most expert groups. Routine VTE prophylaxis is not recommended for the majority of outpatients with cancer. The significantly higher risk awareness, provision of DVT information, and, most importantly, use of prophylaxis reported by inpatients with cancer is likely due to the prevalence of inpatient VTE risk reduction programs mandated by the Joint Commission and the declaration of VTE as a never event by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. 
Some additional survey findings of note. With regard to adherence among patients with cancer, the survey found that about 30% of the 105 warfarin users in the overall oncology patient sample said that warfarin is very or moderately difficult to use. The top three barriers cited, the need for regular blood testing, dosing changes, and dietary restrictions. 38% of 81 low molecular weight heparin users in this sample said that this therapy is very or moderately difficult to use. The main barriers they cited were injection-related and caregiver issues. Despite these significant therapeutic barriers, 73% of the respondents prescribed warfarin and 86% prescribed low molecular weight heparin said they did take it for the full length of time prescribed. The very small number of oncology patients who stopped therapy did so most often at the direction of their doctor. With regard to information and education among all oncology patients surveyed, as previously noted, 73% said they were not told about DVT risk related to cancer. 68% said their doctor did not discuss what can happen if a blood clot forms, and two-thirds said they were not told about blood clot prevention. The survey instrument also included questions to gauge certain patient preferences. When asked what factors they thought might contribute to a more optimal type of treatment to prevent blood clots, about four out of 10 patients said, a blood thinning medication with fewer potential drug interactions, a blood thinning medication with minimal bleeding complications, a pill instead of injections, when asked how they acquire medical information, the top responses were from their doctor 85%, from the internet 73%, and nurses, health advocacy organizations, and family members followed behind. When asked about blood clot risk educational materials, most in the small group of patients who received them said they were given a brochure or pamphlet. When asked to rate such materials, the majority of these same respondents cited websites and books as very useful. NBCA's survey work identified key areas of concern and important future directions that should be pursued. The survey showed that risk does not equal awareness. Oncology patients demonstrate no significantly greater awareness of DVT or PE than members of the general public, but the term blood clot does resonate with all groups surveyed. Within the oncology group, significant disparities were seen. First, in terms of the information provided, compared to inpatients, outpatient respondents received significantly less information about DVT risk related to cancer. Similarly, prophylaxis experiences reported by outpatients show that, compared to inpatient respondents, prophylaxis is underutilized among oncology outpatients surveyed. While numerous treatment barriers, such as the need for regular blood tests, dosing changes, and injection issues were identified, most oncology patients did adhere to the anticoagulation therapy they were prescribed. In response to these findings, the National Blood Clot Alliance has identified several important interventions that are needed. Patient awareness must be improved. Simplified language should replace technical terms. Improve patient and physician dialogue about DVT-PE risks and prevention. Optimize VTE education programs and prophylaxis practices for patients with cancer. Research into new therapies should be conducted to reduce, if not eliminate, treatment obstacles. By moving forward on a path that is responsive to the Surgeon General's call to action to prevent DVT and PE, healthcare professionals in oncology will contribute to improve DVT-PE understanding and prophylaxis, reduced risks and reduced complications, and ultimately, decreased morbidity, mortality, and costs. The realization of this goal is critical to the patients that we serve and can only be achieved through the diligent efforts of key healthcare providers like you. The National Blood Clot Alliance thanks you for your commitment to DVT PE education and prevention and for your efforts to stop the clot.